Okay, this is um, just going back over the um, creative culinary design process um, workshop that we um, had while you were down here for our first um, workshop. And this is looking at what inspires our culinary design. So just some of the factors that come into it. Um, so from a research point of view, um, the research states that chefs um, seek inspiration from other chefs and restaurateurs, other cuisines and cultures, and in many cases revisiting classic or proven dishes. What is of particular use? So during the workshop we had a look at the um, creative methods of Fran Adria. Uh, from the Bully restaurant and looking into the ways that he um, is inspired and, and acquires uh, new knowledge. And here were some of the methods that Adria uh, used and we'll break these down individually again. So looking at traditional and local foods and in particular for him it was Spanish foods, um, the influences of other cultures, um, this concept of technique concept search, so looking for new techniques and new ways of doing things. Adaptation, um, deconstruction, uh, minimalization, and inspiration, and the various ways in which he um, engages with these. So, for Adria, um, if we look at the traditional com combination of ham and melon, or prosciutto and melon, um, that was the inspiration behind this dish here, which is the um, ham consomme with melon scarification. But even in New Zealand, if we look at traditional foods, for instance, like a white bait patty, and how else could a white bait patty be created with those same flavours and same textures? And examples of that I've seen people have made um, white bait timbales, and um, or they could take the classic white bait meat combination and make a white bait souffle. So these are looking at traditional foods and how that they can be readapted. Again, um, many of you on the workshop were quite interested in um, this. Person here, this is Garrett Kern, just making a note down here. Um, and in this case, he was looking at the traditional soup of gazpacho. And so, simply by using, um, looking at the soup and changing some of the core ingredients, and here you can see how Garrett Kern has produced a red pepper gazpacho, and he's made it quite contemporary with a goat's cheese sorbet playing on that whole chilled soup concept. Um, but certainly, um, Gazpacho with some kind of feta or cheese is, is not a new combination at all. Um, down here, was, he states how it was um, inspired by the uh, works of Hester Blumenthal and Thomas Kellogg. So, in some ways, it's also inspired by other chefs. Here, we can see how you can use the influence of other culture to um, inspire um, your food. And this is the work of Ryan Olson from Otago Polytechnic. So, in this situation, Ryan was asked to create. Um, finger food um, around the culture of the Mediterranean Mediterranean food. So over here uh, Ryan has produced a tomato and mint tea, um, obviously inspired through um, Moroccan influences. We also see that over here Ryan has, um, he, one of the requirements was to use raw food, the tartar method, um, and so he looked at um, Lebanese food. And so he's incorporated the use of a um, couscous um, and a traditional, underneath the you see a traditional tabbouli. Um, he's incorporated as the inspiration. And here we see the use of phyllo and cured salmon and fennel um, having some Greek influence there. And we have seen Italian influence here with the chicken that's filled with caramelised onions and uh, black olives and crumbed in a feta crust. Um, here we can see some polenta, um, and again, I'm not 100% sure what Ryan is using here, but, um, but he also had the um, uh, raw fish that he used, um, which is flavoured on top there. So we can see how other culture can quite have a major influence in our food design. Here we see another work of a student as an example, and, and this is influenced by the Italian culture. So within this dish of leafish, he's been using polenta. Parma ham here on the chicken, um, some the Mediterranean flavours that you will find around the region, um, and again this um, chicken leg or balantine was um, stuffed with pine nuts and the like, so quite a heavily influenced Italian dish. We can also use adaptation 
of dishes. So in this situation here, this is cullen skink, which is the traditional Scottish dish, which is made with smoked um, herring, or from memory, or haddock, actually, I can't remember exactly what it's made from. Um, but this uh, work here, the girl Rosie Saunders, what she did was taking the concept of a um, traditional Scottish soup and um, adapting it to her food style when using the local product here in Dunedin and slightly refining the dish uh, with the addition of truffle oil. So taking an original idea and just slightly adapting it. Again, the simple concept here we have a, I think it's a, be sure it's a coffee creme brulee um, and just taking the basic idea of how you make a creme brulee, adapting it to your environment, uh, your workplace and your food philosophy you can um, um, change it to um, quite easily be adapted. Here's an example of deconstruction as a way to look for creative inspiration. So in this recipe here we can see that uh, with this, this is a Caesar salad and we can see that the, the bacon is, uh, is placed here with um, pork belly, the anchovy is um, a fresh grilled anchovy, we can see the cod lettuce underneath here, the poached egg um, and the Caesar dressing which has been incorporated into the dish. So, but in, at the same time it's all been deconstructed into um, um, the larger components of the original dish. Again, minimalization can be um, a creative inspiration. So taking um, maybe a complicated dish or processing and presenting in its most simplest form. This is an example of um, a dish from Riverstone which is a chocolate lava tart um, with um, vanilla bean ice cream. So food doesn't always have to be complicated um, and sometimes we can take quite complicated ideas. Um, I mean we could imagine that this dish here for instance could be made complicated by making um, the, instead of doing it in a tartlet shell, the lava tart, we could make it in a fondant which becomes more difficult of course from a production um, aspect and of course we could add more elaborate garnishes to it but minimalization is actually um, one type of um, creative process that we can use. This is um, the work of Scotty Anderson and it relates quite well to Fran Ardred's concept of Technique concepts um, are the new techniques are the, are the highest level of creative inspiration. They are the most difficult to to achieve. Um, we know that with Fran Adria, the um, the technique of saffirification, um, even gelification and um, foams and that have, have been quite complicated processes um, and quite groundbreaking processes. And so here we see similar work with Scotty Anderson where he took the idea of seeing um, a teapot and the infusion of aromatic herbs into a um, stock as the inspiration for this dish. Here we have the percolator and as we discussed in the workshop inside with the aromatics um, being fennel, corn shells, um, little star anise and some other herbs and then using this as the, the vessel to create the bully bass that goes with the accompanying seafood. Also, Adria, as, as part of the creative process, talks about um, inspiration coming from everyday um, things through nature, history, architecture, everyday objects. Here we can see where history has played a part in the creative design process. In this work, Ryan Nelson um, well, I'll explain the work actually. It's a sous vide piece of beef. Um, this is a suet pudding and um, beef pie with mushrooms in there as well. Um, it actually has a potato foam on the side of it um, and a parmesan wafer, which is made of uh, parsnip wafer, which is made of parsnip puree, which is slowly dried. So, even though it seems quite modern and contemporary with the use of sous vide and potato foams, the actual concept behind the dish was visiting historical um, um, aspects. So Ryan was looking here at this traditional beef and suet pudding and how we can have the marriage of um, historical aspects to the food and modern day contemporary aspects and we can see the marriage of two of them blending together in this dish. 
Um, Adria talks about the use of nature as, as inspiration uh, for food. Um, over here, again, this dish is inspired by autumn, and you can sort of see the autumn leaf look to it and the autumn colours. And on the right, we have um, the inspiration of, of a hurricane, and it's visual, and it's evident in the visual presentation there. You can see here on the right the use of architecture, uh, and the chef here clearly states that architecture was the inspiration for this kind of dessert even though it's probably not as appropriate now as it was maybe 10 years ago in pastry where pastry was completely architecturally driven and again just everyday simple objects um, can inspire our work so here we have a, a coffee cup and it becomes now becomes an edible part of the dessert but also part of the presentation and the, and the way in which the dessert is served also it's important to remember um, that dish and product evolution is um, a, a, a major um, source of inspiration for us as we design food. So I remember telling the story about how this black pudding here, black pudding tart to tart, was originally seen um, in a prior work um, and how it evolved into this dish. And the combination of offal and pork was then the inspiration for a dish that followed on in which the student um, prepared a, a humble pie being a, a, a small pie that was um, prepared from the leftover organs from um, from the pig and again that student used a humble pie in combination with the premium cut of meat so showing technique but at the end of the day it is dish um, evolution it's how the dish evolves through years and um, subtle changes occur but um, new techniques um, evolve Again, we meet Nick Moore on the trip, and here is his work down here. This is the fennel, um, fennel tart, so it was a brulee-based tart with candied fennel. And again, we can see how in this dish it evolved into a vanilla bean tart with um, candied fennel and saffron ice cream. And there was also a, a link there with Nick uh, between the, the fennel and the saffron and blue base, which he was, who was also his inspiration. Again, this is the work of Laura Bush, as I discussed, and the key part of her, this parsnip soup that she had with truffle oil were these beet, beetroot croutons. Um, so from this dish, these beetroot croutons that she created, the crispy fried beetroot, it evolved into this dish here, which was the hot um, jelly of beetroot with the duck confit, the beetroot croutons, and then the parsnip puree. So we can see how dishes can just simply evolve through time. And again, one of the last, but if not most important ways in which we are inspired by food is taking classic dishes and classic combinations and slightly reworking them. And this is a great example of slightly um, over the top in its presentation of taking a classic rhubarb um, strudel and reworking them into something which is, in this case, very artistic, quite elaborate, um, but really just a reworked um, rhubarb strudel at the end of the day. So I hope that that has um, helped you a little bit um, again with just revisiting that process and here is the um, of course the dish that um, I created and the literature that also went along with that uh, which was the TT being the mutton bird which was slow cooked in the sous vide um, sitting on the little Marrow potatoes that were then crusted also in the grated uh, uh, moi moi potato to create the um, the effect of a basalt rock with a little bits of seafood poking underneath and the hot jelly made from wild spinach and seaweed um, and then the foam sauce that went with it which was made from the smoked um, eel that was part of it. So, thank you.